That's the intro to the show. Welcome to Barbell Shrugged. I'm Mike Bleto here with Doug Larson and Chris Moore. We've traveled yeah. uh, to Columbus, Ohio to watch the CrossFit Regional Central, Central East. Mm -hmm. And we decided to drop into Westside Barbell and hang out with Louis Simmons. Do a little training. Uh, if you don't know, Westside Barbell is the mecca of powerlifting. <laughs> uh, the, most, the, the strongest guys in the world come out of, out of Westside Barbell. We're sitting here with the coach, Louis Simmons, and owner of Westside Barbell. We're going to talk a little bit about strength. So, Louie, what um, we're going to talk about strength in regard to CrossFit a little bit. Uh, what do you think CrossFitters? What, what do you think their biggest weakness is? Uh, basically, CrossFit ab lacks absolute strength. That means, uh, you know, being absolutely strong in all lifts with no time limit. The stronger you are, uh, the better you are at any sport, explosive sports or endurance. Frank Shorter, for instance, the more reps he could do with 100 pounds in a squat, the faster marathon times he had. Yeah, I think we make that point uh, pretty routinely that if you're going to do a thruster with 95 pounds, if you can make your absolute strength go up, well, that, that 95 pounds for a time is going to feel a whole lot, lot easier. That's the golden rule, right? What do you mean by uh, absolute strength without time? It, it has no time limit. When you lift a maximal deadlift or a maximal clean and jerk, there's no time limit. The object is to lift as much as possible. You know, when uh, people look at lifts, they don't really examine things like I do. If you look at Benny Magnuson, deadlift 10, 14, time, the time that is, he starts the bar off the ground till he stands erect. If you take the time of the, the largest clean, all right, in the world, take that time, the time he cleans and stands up, and you'll be surprised that at Manny's, uh, 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 Benny stands up erect faster than he does. Well, his, his, his lift at that Texas meet or whatever he did that um – that 1,018 where it was, maybe the most impressive thing I've ever seen anybody do. Mm -hmm. I mean, he pulls 1,000 pounds plus off the ground with no straps, just a little belt, like it was a, not a very hard repetition. He holds it for, we hold it like 10 seconds at the top. And I, before that, I thought the strongest thing I ever saw was seeing Andy pull 1,000, Andy Bolton at the Arnold Classic and wherever he did that. Maybe it was in New York. Mm -hmm. and he could, I think he, it was 1,003. He, could, he locked it out, and it was kind of shady lockout. But to see Benny just manhandle 1,000 pounds, I mean – even compared to heavy, like 250, pound, or 250 kilo plus clean and jerks. I've never seen anything like that. That was nuts. And did it so fast. So there's a big misconception in sports and general training and all uh, uh, the general public that Olympic lifting is explo builds explosive strength. Mm. It does not. Olympic weightlifting is a speed string sport. The average uh, bar speed is 0.8 meters. And mm. the average weights are trained between 75 and 85% for speed strength over 50% of the time. All right. Explosive strength is jumping. Jumping plyometrics, jumping off, land depth jumps, drop jumps, and that's where explosive strength is built. Explosive strength, the velocity is is, is fast, it's fa very you know uh, fast velocity builds explosive strength. Intermediate velocity builds speed strength. Oh. Slow velocity builds strength speed, and of course isometrics has zero velocity. Mm -hmm. What what percentage what percentage of say a one rep max would you work with somebody to build explosive strength? Thirty to fifty. So thirty to fifty percent would be the the range. For the explosive strength, and, and you would – Olympic weightlifting is probably in the 70 to 80 percent of, say, a one of max deadlift, that would be what you'd be cleaning? In Olympic weightlifting, if you look at the charts, uh, off 780 highly qualified weightlifters overseas because there is none here, 50 mm -hmm. percent um, of their training between 75 and 85 percent. Uh, if you look, it's, it's you can be found in the management and training of the weightlifter. Now, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's actually kind of a hot topic you just kind of brought up is uh, we don't have any elite weightlifters here. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Why do you think the rest of the world, well, maybe not the rest of the world, but there's definitely certain countries that uh, clean the floor with us lately in the last you know, 20, 30 years in weightlifting. Why is that? Well, there's two reasons. One, we don't have qualified coaches. Okay. Okay. Uh, they have the athletes. If a coach wants to tell me you don't have athletes, you're kind of insulting. You know, a sport is only, a, a team is only good as a, as a coach. 
-hmm. Bella Corolla came here years ago. Women's gymnastics was a total yep. joke. The first mm -hmm. year he spent here, he had women on a weight training program. Then he competed. Now American women are so strong that they do technical um, uh, events that the other women in the world can't do. So that's why they score so high, and that's why they win. That's due to their strength. Do their strength. That's a good point because even, like, even if you look at like China's crop of, of gym, gymnasts who are amazing, the things they can do, to see in kind of a, yeah interesting comparison to weightlifting that we do so well in gymnastics, given that's a huge sport in China as well as is weightlifting. We haven't quite got there yet in weightlifting. I think maybe the, the momentum now is shifting. I think, like, like Gun Pelina is quick to say, I think CrossFit is now creating an environment where you know, a kid like Kendrick Ferris who maybe thinks about playing football maybe gets into fitness more and maybe we get more of a talent pool we can draw from and maybe develop some good weightlifters. Because there there's tons. If a kid can take a football, run down a football field and score a touchdown, he, he's, he, he could be very good at weightlifting if he wanted to. If it, but if, it, if the pressure's not there to excel at that sport, maybe he doesn't even want to. You know? there's, there's a lot of reasons weightlifting's not good. There's no heroes. NBA, mm -hmm. NHL, NFL, MMA, you all have your hero. Mm -hmm. Who's your hero in American weightlifting? Children have no heroes. Mm -hmm. And a big misconception, this is where American weightlifting go wrong. They believe it take, it's speed and not strength, which is ridiculous because that's basic, basic physics. <laughs> if strength didn't matter, they, a weightlifting coach would tell you strength doesn't matter. Technique and speed does. If that was absolutely true, then why do you need weight classes? Why mm -hmm. wanted to 123 lift what a super heavyweight does? That's true. Right. You train any, any weightlifters ever? Anyone comes to you wanting to I'm go never to the next level? No one's ever sent uh, anyone qualified to come here to lift weights. I have a CrossFit that she run, does CrossFit search. Mm -hmm. Abby Grove, she came here uh, with 155 pound power clean for over a year. In two months, no power clean. She power cleaned 205. From 155 to 205 in two months? That's right. No power cleans. Mm -hmm. One thing, you must use bands on a bar. A weightlifting um, in, in general, is a very bar. The bar has a tremendous deceleration. That's why you have to jump under the bar. Mm -hmm. So, to the one of the major aspects of weightlifting to squat under. If you put bands on top of bar, you have to jump under much faster. So, it increases the squat under time. That's essential in weightlifting. Uh, secondly, full extension of the of the torso. Well, when you, because when they pull the bar up, the bar just stops. You have bar deceleration with bands accommodating resistance eliminates most bar deceleration. That's interesting I did because usually you think of, well, I'll pull the, I'll use bands to pull the bar higher and harder. But the fact that it's going to be ripped back down and you've got to get underneath it. If you're slow to get under, which I got, the Chinese web is probably really good because they're fearless in getting under. They pull this big weight up and they are instantly underneath it. You mm -hmm. cannot compare Chinese. I, I, I read a book that they mailed me about Chinese women, how Chinese women can't front squat as much as Russian women, but they out, they out clean them. Mm -hmm. well, look at the structure of, of Chinese females. Their legs are straight out. Every, all Americans and Russians, everyone's their knees are up in the air. They're bi biomechanically built different. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason. I mean, weightlifters always got this dream. They're going to find one in a billion, and they're going to follow that one in a billion. If I'm going to invest money, I'm going to put all my money where everybody makes money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> To not weightlifting. I, I want to put my. <laughs> that's right. Not I'm going to. I'm going to put my money in oil when it's already been hit. Not one they're digging for. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for general CrossFitters that are trying to get stronger, that already do squats and deadlifts and kind of normal CrossFit type stuff, what would be a big change that you would suggest, uh, like a, a competitive but not world class CrossFitter, take on? One thing that I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Mathematically, how tall is a pyramid? How tall is a pyramid? Mathematically. Mathematically? Oh, no shit. Math. Well, as, like, uh, as tall as this base. Okay. okay. Crossfitters don't have a base. You have to have a wide base to be good at any sport. Mm -hmm. First thing I would do, they do enormous amount of sled dragging, pushing wheelbarrows, walking with straw man yokes, and mm -hmm. so forth. Lots of reverse hypers. You know, you have a lot of lower back injuries, a lot of shoulder injuries. So you have to do complement the training so they don't have the injuries. Mm hmm downtime you're, so you're more, not getting more heavy good. carries is a big thing you think more heavy carries like, yeah. like strength strength endurance strength capacity type movement so they may do a bunch of that stuff now like that's just moving but doing it heavier i think another thing that uh, a lot of crossfit programs leave out is the assistance work what, what kind of i mean you're that's kind of what you're saying right now is and i think they, they kind of they kind of shit things, on it when you say things like okay. reverse hyper that's something that doesn't get done very often in, in the crossfit world i mean is that something okay what 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 other than reverse hyper should crossfitters be doing you think well, let me just put it this way. No gym in the world has two 2,700-pound totals. I have five. Mm -hmm. All right, a 2,960, for mm -hmm. instance, starting down to 2,705. But 
80% of our training is spatial exercise. Only 20% of the training is with a squat, bench, or deadlift. Mm-hmm. Over 80 and above. I've also trained a hip tapalon girl that trained the very same percentages of uh, spatial exercise to uh, classical exercise. So you're mm-hmm. saying 20% of the training is is based on practicing what you're going to do in competition. The other 80% is preparing for that 20%? Is building up the base. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you saw Josh Conley squat in there. Josh just squatted 1080 in the contest. What was his best squat today? It was, uh, so we had a gentleman in here box squatting. Is that the, the shot putter? No. Okay. Well, no, the, oh, that fellow, the shot putter, came here three months ago, had a 700 squat, he box, parallel box squat, 860. Yeah, we just saw it. 160-pound increase in three months. Mm-hmm. But Josh Conley's uh, normal squat workout is 12,000 pounds of squats. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, he his reverse hyper poundage in one workout is forty eight thousand pounds. So that's that's, that's, four, that's, that's, that's that amount of work he's accumulating over the sets. Yeah. It's four Great to one. Reps. It's four to one directed to the lower back, glutes and hamstrings. Mm-hmm. All right. So. so there's something that's a little bit different about your gym. A lot of people say that you shouldn't be using machines. You should all be free weights and whatnot. But you guys have a fair amount of machines and it looks like you take advantage of them quite <laughs> a bit. Well, you got to be smarter than the weights. Mm-hmm. And uh, but also we do 200 leg curls with 20 pound ankle weights, and that's mm-hmm. you go count the steps when you push a wheelbarrow pull a sled. Mm-hmm. We're not making one trip; we're making several trips. A lot of times I'll push a six, to, well, a 630 pound wheelbarrow for 45 minutes straight. I'm 65 years old. Mm-hmm. So that'd be something that's very counterintuitive for a lot of people that that think you guys are training for absolute strength. If you're doing 200 repetitions with 20 pounds, that doesn't sound like a very intuitive thing to do for that sport. Well, without a plan, you plan mm-hmm. to fail. Mm-hmm. And programming is everything. Organization is everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it, like uh, it, like I used to talk about Josh. See, one when he does twelve thousand pounds, I'll give you a. This is a. You add this up. He does twelve thousand pounds of squats on the average because he's a thousand eighty squatter. Mm-hmm. All right. On max effort day, the other day worked up to seven sixty five on a regular deadlift. You know, with no gear or anything yeah. conventional. Mm-hmm. He's a sumo puller. Mm-hmm. All right. You add this up. Um, you, if you start with um, five fifteen, add this up, and then six twenty five. Mm-hmm. So you're eleven something, right? Um, then 715, so you're 1800, and then 765. Mm-hmm. So you're 25, 2600 pounds. Mm-hmm. You see the ratio, very high volume on, on speed day with moderate intensities. Mm-hmm. And the other day is maximum intensity, an all time record. That was a 30 pound record for him, very low volume. They have to crisscross every 72 hours. You can do extreme workout every 72 hours. And mm-hmm. if you can't, then you're out of shape. Mm-hmm. So do you think crossfitters would benefit from taking on more of a speed day? Absolutely, because they have to. What does speed? Why, why do you do? Why do you do? The, what does dynamic method do? Do you know? It develops a fast rate of force development. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's like first gear in your car. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I could have tried to answer that, but I feel like no matter what I said, I would have been wrong. Oh, <laughs> like, no, I have no idea. Tell me. <laughs> you'd, have been, you'd have been right. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you're kind of describing the conjugate method a little bit. A couple of days of the week. Con- the West Side system is con- constantly conjugate. All training is conjugate. Uh-huh. Everything is connected. Even your clothing. And during the week, you change clothes. You know, you go to a different <laughs> event. You wear That's an outfit. Zen of you. You wear an outfit for every every type of activity that you do. But all sports are conjugate. Fighting is conjugate. Mm-hmm. You know, here is my. If you think about CrossFit, and mm-hmm. they always want to do the wads. They want to run a mile and deadlift. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is incorrect. They should do all back back, back exercises on one day, and all running events on another day. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, and I'll bring this up, because if you look at MMA, you're all, mm-hmm. in, you, you, I guess, did some MMA. Mm-hmm. All right. You go, you go do grappling. Mm-hmm. You do some submissions. Mm-hmm. You do some Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. All right. You don't just get in a cage and fight MMA. You do all these activities, then makes you an MMA fighter. Right. You can't just do the wads and become a CrossFitter. Because why? Because it's a law of accommodation. Mm-hmm. You do the same activity over and over. Uh, bio, it's a biological law. You'll become uh, worse at it. Mm-hmm. And so you guys train Matt Brown here, and you were saying that you know, he's, he's a very talented professional fighter. So obviously when he came to you guys, yep. well, when did he, actually, when did he come here? Just About two, two and a half years he was okay. declining. He was losing fights. He came here. He's won five straight fights all by stoppage. Well, there yeah. you go. So, so a guy comes to you with a lot of experience already. He's, mm-hmm. he's obviously, as a professional fighter, in, in good cardio shape. And you guys basically took him, kind of like you were saying earlier, and you, you added a lot of absolute strength to his to his programming, and now he's been destroying people. That's right. When we you, we just left the gym, Matt was doing uh, with his jiu-jitsu coach, uh, one uh, um, um, like lunging good mornings, leg out in front good mornings. So that's how you do oh, yeah. a single or double leg. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt pulls heavy sleds f- for a half a mile or a mile at a time, carrying mm-hmm. a hundred pound med ball. 
And that's that Ooh. that that will fucking toast your lower back. All right. Yeah. He also pushes. He'll carry the, a, a strongman yoke or push the young strongman yoke or do it in burst. Push it forward. Walk. Do it. Push it forward. Walk. Do it. Mm-hmm. Push it forward. I really walk. like that for fighters, actually. Mm-hmm. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. And see CrossFit because all combat sports like football is just combat. CrossFit in the way is like combat. It's like a combat sport. Mm-hmm. You don't have they don't have to deadlift seven hundred and mm-hmm. anything, but they had to be all their their body has to be generally stronger mm-hmm. and maintain dexterity, flexibility, and so forth. No and earlier earlier no you were saying it's, it's all in the ass. It's all in the ass. You got a strong ass, you're a strong person. That's right. <clears throat> so if you if I take anything away from today, take Use that. your ass. Yep. Hashtag. Yeah. Well, you probably saw the girl from England walk in the bell squat for five minutes straight. Mm. Uh, Matt actually walks in that bell squat with 365 for five minutes straight. While we box with him or actually grapple and pull down on his arm. Then we'll run Matt out of there. I don't want to tell too many secrets. But then <laughs> we'll, we'll, we, we jump on the mat with him. Mm-hmm. Then you got to roll right back in and do that again. Or we'll sit him down, walk him with a 100-pound med ball, come back, and he's got to jump for a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. How, how integrated is his strength training with his MMA training? It sounds like you're, you guys are getting some mat work done. I know a lot of times strength coaches for MMA fighters don't really, you know, get on the mat with them or anything like that. Like, is he doing a lot of fight training at Westside or? No, yeah. okay. no, some but we want to grapple with him while he's fatigued. You don't spar with so Matt, you, Louis? So you, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you, no, you, I've you uh, done that before. You fatigue him with a sled, med balls, all that stuff, and then, and then he gets down on the mat. Then he has to do skill work. Okay, so he has to do skill work under fatigue. From so we go from general training to specific training in the same workout, okay. which is a lot of people have never heard of it, but, well, he's not doing too bad. And uh, years ago, I trained Kevin Randleman. He was UFC heavyweight champion at mm-hmm. the time. Who was I, a trained, monster. I trained two gold medal Olympic sprinters as well. A lot of people don't know this. I trained a 70-10 shot putter, mm-hmm. came to Ohio State, throwing 59 as a freshman, trained with me the entire time through 70-10 as a senior. From 59 to 70? 70 foot 10. This, this mic is giving me trouble. It's popping. Yeah. Son of a bitch. See, to be, can we shut this thing down or something? Do have to mic. use this? Jason Khalifa, CrossFit Games champion. Jason Khalifa, ladies and gentlemen, the 2001 CrossFit Games champion. Anthony. Welcome back to Technique Quad. My name is Doug Larson with the Barbell Shrug Podcast. Today we're going to talk about glute ham raises, which are a popular assistance movement, especially in the powerlifting world. Uh, crossfitters are kind of slowly picking it up. So uh, what it looks like is it looks just like this. I'm going to put myself on a GHD machine. I want to be able to be all the way at the top just like this. Maybe if you're just starting off you can start a little bit lower like this. You're going to come, you're going to come all the way down, bend at the hip, and then fire back up and pull yourself up just like that. Okay. So for the most part this is a hip extension followed by a knee, or excuse me, yeah, hip extension followed by a knee flexion. Very similar, if you look at it one more time, I bend the hip, I extend the hip, and then I flex the knee like that. If you look at kind of what that looks like, so if I'm running, I extend the hip, and then I flex the knee, and I come back through. So it's very similar to running, actually. Uh, not the exact same thing, but similar. Hip extension followed by knee flexion. And the most uh, notable part about the movement is that you get a very strong hamstring contraction uh, that actually flexes the knee rather than, rather than something like an RDL where I'm using my hamstrings to specifically extend the hip. Excuse me. Uh, to extend the hip, I'm using my hamstrings to flex my knee. So uh, that doesn't happen very often uh, really in a lot of sports and it doesn't happen very often um, in CrossFit. Uh, a good example from kind of my side of the world, uh, something like jiu-jitsu, if I'm on my back, I'm always pulling with my legs and I'm contracting my hamstrings specifically to flex my knee. Uh, this is a, a great movement for guys uh, d- that do grappling type sports. So uh, your progression for it looks like this. What I like to do, what I like to do with people is first, what I like to do with people is first, kind of let them come out. They can put their hands right here. They always feel like they're going to fall off the thing. And I just teach them how to do just a full hip extension. Some people call these back extensions or hyper extensions or whatever you want to call them. 
I don't want to hyperextend. I want to stay neutral. Ribs down, butt squeeze, so I'm nice and straight. From there, I'm gonna, from this position, my hip won't move anymore. I don't want to hyperextend my back. I just want to start moving my knees. I'm only bending at the knee. Hoop. I'm gonna come up just like this, okay? Bending at my knee, butt squeeze the whole time, ribs down. So it look like this in slow motion. I'm coming down, knee is straightening. Come to here, pop up, ribs stay down, butt squeeze. I never want to hyperextend on the way up, okay? So a lot of people go like this. They'll come down and they'll hyperextend, which kind of shortens this lever on and makes it feel lighter. It makes it so I don't have to use my glutes. They hyperextend, they come down to here, they round their back only just like this. And then they come back up and they hyperextend again. And then they bend their butt like this and they come up kind of like that. So you don't want to do that, it's a terrible technique. If you're a person that can't not do that, then what you're going to want to do is take a band, pull it over just like this. The more I pull the band over like that, the more help it's going to give me. I can come through, come down, and the band will help me up just a little bit. If I want less help, I can not pull it down quite so far. Okay? Um, once you get to a point where you don't need quite so much momentum, you can do less of a glute ham raise and more of a glute ham leg curl is what I call them. Where I'm going to come down. Squeeze my butt, shoulders back, ribs down. I never hyperextend. I'm going to go right down to straight and then pull and pull myself right back up. Ribs stay down. I don't want to go like this. Go like that. Okay? That's havoc on your back. Terrible. Okay? So, you have two movements the full glute ham raise, where you go all the way to the ground, and then you have the glute ham leg curl using the band to scale or other ideas for scaling. If I, if I take a plate and I elevate and I elevate the front on a couple of plates like that, if I raise the front, um, it'll make the movement a little bit easier. Conversely, if I take those out and I raise the back, it'll make the movement a little bit harder, especially at the top of the movement. Okay? Uh, so those are ways to scale that particular movement. So if you want to uh, have a new exercise to train your hamstrings. This probably isn't something I'd metcon with necessarily, but um, great, um, a great movement to put as some type of assistance work at the end of your strength training. So uh, if you have more questions about glute ham raises or the glute ham leg curl, uh, you can go to barbellshrug.com, click the ask a question tab at the top of the page, and you can ask us a question with that very short survey, and we'll help you out. So you say that uh, conjugate method, I mean, it's, I mean, we're all, conjugate method all the time. I and mean, you can make the same argument, you know, everyone's doing CrossFit all the time because it could be anything. But like how, how the methods you use here at Westside, how can they be applicable to a CrossFitter? Do they, do they need to be just, I mean, I, maybe you already described it. And well, everyone should box squat. The, should fir box the squat. first 800 okay. pound squatter, mm -hmm. 1970 Pat Casey, no gear. Mm -hmm. The only 1,000 pound full squat in the contest is Wilkinson out of Mississippi. He's a box squatter. Mm -hmm. The two largest squats in the world, 1267, 1265 are box squatters, Donnie. Mm -hmm. I've got two 1,200 pound squatters. I trained Vlad when he was here, squatted 1250, but I didn't count it because he went back to New York mm -hmm. for five months. Laura yeah. Phelps is a box squatter. Mm -hmm. This is the greatest method of training. You know, people argue with me, but they don't even know how to box squat. Mm -hmm. There's only one way to box squat. Mm -hmm. and, and so we box squat a lot. And I work on the posterior chain. Mm -hmm. um, lots of inverse curls, lots of reverse hypers, lots of leg curls, lots of power walking with the sled and so forth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of wheel barrel because it's strong grip. When you grip, you use a lot more muscles when not gripping. Mm -hmm. So uh, that we do a lot of that. And high rep deadlifts. For sprinters, for instance, I use high rep deadlifts. Mm -hmm. And if you read a book uh, uh, by um, Barry Ross called Underground Secrets of Running, mm -hmm. Barry Ross describes the same type of training, high rep deadlifts. Fast eccentric mm -hmm. phase. Uh, you know, with hardly any uh, resistance, optimal eccentrics, uh, uh, optimal eccentrics. When you lower weights, you know, you, you hear about how you can lower 50% more you can raise. Mm -hmm. In my world, I have to raise weights. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Yeah. I take a 1,000-pound squatter so he can lower 15. He has to come up. Uh, it's all wrong. It never did a test. Uh, it, no, no test ever showed that a, a, a heavy a slow eccentrics made anyone stronger. Mm -hmm. Well, of course not. Uh, but overspeed eccentrics do. Because mm -hmm. then you create a force that's ever not recognized. I term it a virtual force effect. Mm -hmm. When you have a collision on that box, it's not a perfect collision like two pool balls. When you hit a pool ball at 20 mile an hour, the ball takes off 20 mile an hour. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. But when you sit on there, part of your kinetic energy is absorbed into the box like mm -hmm. a collision between two cars. Mm -hmm. uh, so it takes a part of your kinetic energy away mm -hmm. and causing you uh, to squat up with less kinetic energy, mm -hmm. but all hip flexion. And that's why you can full squat 15% more than you can bounce squat. Mm -hmm. I think Basically I see that. You can't bounce out of the bottom, is what you're saying? That's right. Now, you watch mm -hmm. Olympic lifters. They do, there's no eccentric training in Olympic weightlifters here in America. Mm -hmm. They fall down in the squat, mm -hmm. they drop bars off their back, they drop bars from overhead. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Overseas, yeah. all the books and tapes I have, they do um, not only do just slow pulls up, they also do slow pulls in reverse. They lower them slowly mm -hmm. because they did no eccentric work. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't they don't do isometrics here in america um you know the critical portions of the face is between the first and second <gasps> pole and so forth uh, if they would do isometrics the coach can easily analyze their technique at that position mm -hmm. it is so fast the bars move 2.2 meters 2.4 meters at the explosive portion how mm -hmm. do you how does a coach actually analyze that he can't mm -hmm. but at isometric holds you could so you're saying set a bar at different points in the in the bar path and and do maximum isometric Pulls? Well, any no one that knows anything about weightlifting, they pull from four different positions. Mm -hmm. All right, but I don't see it here in America. They use, uh, you know, uh, one of my pet peeves of American training is they they think they're Bulgarians. They're not. Mm -hmm. uh, Bulgarians primarily did front and back squats, power clean, power snatch, classical clean, and jerk and the snatch. And yeah, not a um, lot of exercises. That's right. Mm -hmm. But they did do uh, a Nam did thirty five percent spatial exercises. They think they only did three, six things. It's ridiculous. All right? And Wait, weightlifting. So what exactly does that mean? Can you explain that a little bit further? The, here in America, they think you can get by by front squatting, back squatting, uh, power clean, power snatch, classical clean jerk, and classical snatch. Only, right? Like only. Not, not doing. No one. That would be the model athlete. To do nothing but six lifts and succeed, you would have to be a model athlete. Mm -hmm. Bulgarians had model athletes. There was a height weight index for every freaking one of them. Mm -hmm. America's not like I got guys like you, six foot tall, mm -hmm. 175 pounds. You're not going to. They yeah, wouldn't let you, the <laughs> they <laughs> you in the door. They wouldn't let you in the door. Now, right. if you look you at any. Any formula in Russian training, Russian, uh, Russian, uh, Romania, mm -hmm. East Germany, they use an average 64 exercises. So why don't Americans? Well, yeah, mm -hmm. you, you see that <laughs> bleeding into what China does, bleeding into other Soviet, ex-Soviet. Oh, yeah. Like the, 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 like the Chinese, you remind me, they'll do a heavy, heavy pull. <laughs> Get it up there, and then they'll, they'll hold it in the position, and they'll, they'll lower it down. They'll even, like do a couple of reps to, to throw it up. They'll lower it down to like an inch above the floor and then go back up. And they also do a bunch of cool shit. Like they'll, they'll set those crazy squat racks up and they'll do quarter front squats with 200 pounds more than they squat just to feel what? that crushing load. They do what? a lot of cool shit. That's for the jerk overhead. And people laugh at them like, oh, look, they're doing knee extensions. They'll do anything that helps them prepare for this activity. That's right. If doing ab raises and one-arm uh, kettlebell rows helps them get in a better position for a snatch or tolerate that training better, they do it. It's like sort of uh, anything to help their progress is what they're going to consider. Well, they sold Russian training. Yeah. You see them doing dumbbell rows. You see them doing chin-ups. You see them doing side bends. Mm -hmm. But Americans, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's good enough for the Chinese right now, it's probably good enough for us. So as, so as a novel exercise for crossers that emphasizes that eccentric portion of the lift, doing like a clean or a snatch pull and then lowering it down through a, as similar of a bar path as you had on the way up, and then right before you get to the ground – Going back up and doing like a triple with that, would that be something no, I would more do novel? No, one rep. <laughs> Singles? Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's probably a very good point because I think... Mike, Max effort, might... keep volume low. Yeah. So as a quantify that, can you? The, okay. When you go to a contest, how many attempts you get? You get three. In mm -hmm. weightlifting or powerlifting. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you work on max effort day, your first attempt, you know, should basically be around 90%. Like if you could deadlift you uh, 600 pounds, then you do like 540, 90%. Mm -hmm. Then maybe 580 and 605 for a record, you're done. Mm -hmm. Or go 540, 605, 610, you're done. You don't have much more juice to do more. You have no more. You yeah. have no more. So after 25 years' experiments here with, you know, I've had 74 people squat at least 800, okay? Mm -hmm. After 25 years of experience, um, there three lifts, you're done. You know, a novice could come in and maybe make a couple more, but within six months, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. So you, that's optimal training. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, people ask me about Circa Max, I asked Mel Seth how to do Circa Max. I was doing seminars with Mel with Super Train. He says, I have no idea. I said, well, Mel, it's in your book. So, <laughs> so you'll have to cross-reference books. Circa Max weights, in case you don't know, are uh, a percentage is 90 to 97%. Mm -hmm. If so you look at max. the management and training of the weightlifter, weights at above 90% are 4 to 10. 4 minimal, 
10 op maximal, 7 optimal. Mm -hmm. So on our circuit max phase, the, the guys will do two decent doubles on the way up and three singles, seven lifts. Just like those experiments that they did, that's how we do that. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, all three lifts go into a contest, just not the squat. Um, all three lifts are uh, there because we use delay transformation. Do you know what that is? No, I don't. No. Delay no, transformation. You know what delay transformation? Yeah, I mean, basically, it, it, there's a taper and an optimization of, of that's the, right before the meet. My taper, my taper is what names. Uh, my taper is 35 days out. We train about 50 in a small base off the squat, 50 mm percent. -hmm. Like if you're a thousand pound squatter, you do maybe six doubles of 500 and some re a band resistance. Mm -hmm. Next week, 28 days out, same thing. 21 days out. You take the biggest weight possible. That's our circuit max weight. Mm -hmm. Like the guys will do roughly 700, squat 1,100. Mm -hmm. 700 and 440 band. The next week they do 510 and 440 band. Mm -hmm. The next week they do 420 and 140 band. They go to meet and Josh went from 1020 to 1080. Yeah, so that, that band tension and, and bar combo is putting you at loads that are right there at your max, what you want to hit at the meter, maybe even a little more. And then you, you take, take but, the load back. Well, it's just a tester. Mm -hmm. For us, it's a tester. Mm -hmm. But if now, you know, you hear me say that the Soviets used 50% of the training between 75 and 85%. Now, if you recognize what I do, which a lot of people don't, mm -hmm. I say for contests, we train at 50, 55, 60%. Yeah. With 25% mm -hmm. band tension for speed strength. 50%, 25, 75%. This is right 60 and 25 range. is 85%. Mm -hmm. We follow the very mm -hmm. same loading that the. One, one group off 780 highly qualified weightlifters. I said, why would I, why would I be so arrogant to think I got a better way? They've mm -hmm. done it for years. I followed their guidelines. Yeah. And so you think band tension is much better than chains? I know people you know, use, use yes, pair those together. Yeah, we use both. You saw the guys that used uh, that one group used 200 pound of chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, but why is bands better than chain? Well, it's accelerating down. Because the acceleration. Down. Yeah. That's right. Portion. Overspeed is centric. It's more yeah. kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. You know, anyone uh, is listening to this broadcast and saying, well, that guy, he's crazy. Why wouldn't you lower the weight slow? Um, any coach out there, they do plyometrics, even, you know, even though they're not really expert at it. But we know how fast. <laughs> it's dangerous jump, in the wrong hands. <laughs> when you jump off a box, how fast are you moving? Speed of gravity, I guess. Which is what? 9.8 9 meters 8. per second That's squared. exactly right. And you know they work? Is there any argument that it worked, right? We yeah, all know. I, that's the rules. Okay, then why would anyone slow, lower weight slow? Well, you're not going to do it in sport. You're never going right. to move slowly in sport. You get your ass handed. You move here. slow, you're sitting on the bench. Yeah, or in fighting, if you move slow. That's right. You, you do that example. Uh -huh. Pull that punch back slow and yeah. see what happens. And also, people do <laughs> plyometrics. I mean, I, I hope you listen to this broadcast. This is all the recommendations of Yuri Verfashansky, mm -hmm. all right, which I highly, you know. Russian sports scientist. That's right, for mm -hmm. years. I've, I've done this for 32 years now, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, if you want to build explosive strength and you do drop jump uh, depth jumps with a rebound, you use boxes between 30 and 35 inches. Mm -hmm. If you want to build absolute strength, you use much higher boxes up to maybe six feet. And can you, can you tell me why? Because you have more kinetic energy on the way down? You have Jumping you, off you, a six-foot box? Same, yeah, we, yeah, we're What's doing a depth jumps uh, Six-foot will build no, I'm not doing it. Absolute, I'm too fat to do that. Oh, you're right. <laughs> six-foot, I mean, that's extreme. But six-foot will build absolute strength. The shorter height drops will build explosive power. Do you know why? No. Automization phase. You, oh, the, the shorter drop, that's right. Yeah. It takes you longer a, to reverse yourself. Well, mm -hmm. from a higher drop, just like heavy weights, are, are, takes longer to reverse yourself. You know, you're not going to mm -hmm. reverse 800 like you do 500. Yeah. So for a weightlifter who's trying to improve their, their clean and jerk and maybe isn't focused on their squat, which would, would you recommend doing the shorter ones or maybe have phases of training where you're the doing higher the taller ones. ones? But you have to push the squat up. You know, I've, I have people come here with a 360 clean and a 370 front squat. So I ask you, what is the odds of going to a contest, getting a record clean and a record front squat at the same time? It's slim. Mm -hmm. You need Fair a enough. reserve of strength. If I, you know, like, you know, a guy, you, well, you look at wildlife. Um, a, a lion doesn't jump on something and thinks he's going to get his ass kicked. <laughs> it's got a, it's got a reserve of confidence that's going to kill that. Right. A shark, a shark bites and then lets the thing fall to the earth. It doesn't struggle. That's a good with point. It. Like what? Is, do you, what's what's Kendrick's best front squat? Kendrick I, being one of I our best weightlifters is a pretty legitimate weight there. I think he front squats. What's his body weight? Is uh, he a, he's a ninety four kilo now. So he's like two with a two plus seven, seven six. Yeah. So he 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 he'll squat six hundred raw for a deep, uh, pretty solid triple. So Kendrick's one of these guys who. He's now realizing what it takes to, to take American weight thing up. He's got a squat that's now as good as any of these Europeans, but he just needs that 
it's that extra, it's that hero thing, it's that lifestyle thing, it's that realization of the dream thing. They, once he sets that example and breaks through, I think other people will follow. They, they do it backwards. Here in America, for, they want to follow the squat, amount of squat you do while you're clean. It needs to be the other way around. You take a, a, a weightlifters, they're built like most of you, you know, three out of four guys here, mm-hmm. thin, thinner, more athletic, because mm-hmm. you got to be flexible. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, thin people can deadlift more than they can squat. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. have to push up the squat. When the squat goes up, like the it. cleans go up. Right. Um, I, I know the way that, that I train and program is we have phases of training where we're working on strength. Maybe we spend a month really focused on the squat and then a month really focused on the clean and jerk. What, I, I mean, how do you feel about Louis that? Louis got an opinion about like, that. Like, <laughs> so, like, because I've got the wheels turning now. I was like, maybe I should be doing really high depth jumps during my, when I'm well, trying to push my squat up, and maybe I should do shorter ones when I'm trying to get my clean up. Well, you're, well, you're way off base. I'm going, <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be the first time, be the first time he's been told this. <laughs> okay, what you're doing is you're doing long-term block periodization. Yes. Okay, long-term. Block one will work into block two. Block one will never work into block three. Why wouldn't you do what Westside does? Every week I know how fast you are, and every week I know how strong you are, and every week I build up your weakness. That's Perfect. why Westside is successful. For all the crossers out there that don't really understand what you do, can you give us a, like right. a one-week block of kind of how you guys work? Uh, uh, let me start on Friday because mm-hmm. this is Friday. Today is speed squat, <laughs> dynamic true. method. Mm-hmm. The bar speed averages 0.8 meters per second. That's mm-hmm. speed strength. Uh, they do high volume, you know, do eight doubles mm-hmm. uh, with, with band resistance, you know, some type of chain resistance. Mm-hmm. So you have high volume, moderate intensity, 50 to 60% with 25% band tension on top. It's in that golden range of like 70, 75. It's, so. it's basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what I say, 75 to 85% mm-hmm. at the top. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, then the same day, the next day we speed bench where we use 40% of our floor press. Mm-hmm. All right. I have 11 people over 800 in the bench, two of the nines. I have six, you know, I've had a dozen, I've had six guys raw bench over 600. I had a Nick winner, 700 raw bencher. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's speed he's a big, work he's a big again. Guy. Yeah. Fast rate, fast rate of force development. That's mm-hmm. what weightlifting is. Right. It's a speed strength sport. Mm-hmm. Then on Monday is max effort for the squat or dead. That way we break an all time record. I way I can see on Friday, I can watch you and see how fast you are squatting on Monday. If you're doing high poles or snatch grip deadlifts, or even a power clean, I can monitor how strong you are. And then, um, and then, uh, uh, you know, so if you go to the Olympic League, then that'd be the end of the story. But then on Wednesdays, our max effort bench. Mm-hmm. So we're t- constantly testing a floor press record, a band record, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so these are see, testers, the monster diff- where guys are at. It's different every week, isn't it? It's different. You, different every, you're okay. not going to repeat an exercise for weeks on end. Well, if you do the same weights at 90% or above for three weeks in a row, you will go backwards. It's, it's, it's a biological law of accommodation. Mm-hmm. So Westside is smart enough to realize we switched the max effort exercise each week. Mm-hmm. Right. And is that mostly squatting and then deadlifting on occasion? It's my understanding you guys do more squats than deadlifts. No, is that not you're true? wrong. No, yeah, okay. you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, at Westside, uh, they do an extremely heavy rack pull on pin, you know, with the plates two, four, six, it's off the ground, either with real weight or 250 pound of band tension or 350 pound of band tension. Mm-hmm. And they'll do a max deadlift off, of, off the floor mm-hmm. um, with either 220 pound of band tension or 280 pound of band tension. Mm-hmm. So that's two of the four weeks. The other week is a squatter good morning. The other week basically might be uh, heavy wear barrels and uh, heavy sled pulls and heavy inverse curls, and back raises, glute hams. Mm-hmm. So let's talk high. a little bit about that. Crossers do not do a lot of good mornings. Rarely, rarely, rarely. So talk a little bit why you guys incorporate good mornings into your training. Uh, because you're going to get bent over. I watch CrossFit, and, and a lot of their deadlifts form is really, you know, radically bad. So yeah. if you're going to be radically in bad, bad, I like that. Okay. If, you, <laughs> if you're going case. to be in radically bad positions, you better build your back up for those radically bad positions. Mm, so it true. takes an enormous amount of abdominal. And just because you got a six-pack don't mean you have a strong stomach. Mm-hmm. It just means you're on a good diet. So you have to have a very strong stomach, a lot of zercher squats, carrying 100-pound med balls. Mm-hmm. You know, the med ball thing feet. sounds crazy, right. crazy couple, fucking hard. Right, a couple mm-hmm. hundred feet at a time. Yeah. Uh, do that. and But you need to bend, bend over, arch up. Bend over, arch up. Because mm-hmm. that's exactly the way they're going to be. For most You're going to be bent over. Mm-hmm. For most crossfitters, Lou, where would, where would you stick that in? What kind of weight and reps and sets would you do for uh, a good I morning? would stick with, uh, you know, whatever my best clean is. I would use... And which is not much, you know, for the most. I mean, maybe a lot of them, I've seen some do 335 and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, 70% of that. I would follow the recommendations of Russian weightlifting. Mm-hmm. 70% they, of that for a good morning? That's right, for, okay. for fives. For fives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that, so, I think the good morning, probably that and, like, the RDL, I mean, I think a, a big problem with CrossFitters in a clean, Mike, you know more about it than me, is – I mean, you want to be strong in the, in the hips and back, so as you pull that bar up, you can keep it where you want it. 
Whereas just pulling wildly and the bar ends up wherever the fuck it's going to end up, you're going to clean bad if you don't put it where you need it, I right in the pocket see, of your hip. I definitely see the biggest problem is on the way up. Yeah, getting, but if you, if you can bend over, bad bend over you position. do good mornings with 250 for sets of 10. You know, when you do your clean for 300, you're going to put the bar where it needs to be. Your back's going to be able to hold the position. You're going to be able to scoop the bar into you and stay on your heels. In, in case you don't know, the, 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 the major problem for missing a snatch, for instance, is, is uh, total body uh, in, you know, uh, incline. You, d- you never get your backwards. You don't, you don't get. You, you don't, lose it. You don't finish that pool. So why? Why do you do it with lightweights, but you can't do it with heavyweights? Oh, it's, it's, an av- it's a strength issue for sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's not a speed issue. No. It's, it's definitely like hamstrings, yeah. hips, well, giving out. Yeah, okay. if, you're not, if you're not in position, it's, it's, you're not going to get where you need to go. You know, I, I mentioned Abby Grow a while ago. Went from 155. Oh, I'll give you another example. 155 mm-hmm. and come here for over a year. Mm-hmm. That was it. And two months, no power clean. She does 205. Mm-hmm. All right. How'd she do it? I had another guy come here. He wanted to qualify for nationals at uh, like 165, what it is now, 169, what the hell. Okay. He had a 270 clean and jerk. 169, yeah. 270 clean and jerk. It's the best he's ever done. In mm-hmm. two months, he did 319 at the nationals. Nice. How did he mm-hmm. do it? By put, placing bands over the bar. Dr. Medvedev said in the 60s, you must use bands or cords over a bar. All right. That's they, over the bar on it clean? On top. That's right. Mm hmm. But you have to eliminate bar deceleration. So which band are about, they using? Are about getting the bar all the way to your shoulders, or are you talking about a clean pool? I'm talking all of it. <laughs> you should try that, Mike. How We're about push jerk overhead? Why wouldn't you use it in a bench? I, well, I, have, I, have, the world, used, I, I have used ban- bands to pre- for push press. And what happened? You increase your press press? I really liked it, yeah. yeah it yeah. will also increase your pull. Uh, yeah. That's what we did with Abby. That's what we did with the guy. If you bring me a weightlifter, mm. a real weightlifter, yeah. you bring me one and give me three months. Who can we nominate? You. I don't have the time. Come to, to, come come to Columbus. Let, what we kind get of weight? Oh, I'm not a, I'm not a uh, full-time athlete. So. You're not a real weightlifter then. No. <laughs> my, my, my total is... Your, squat, uh, two, your squats look good. Your, what's, your clean? what's your clean jerk? It's uh, about 310. Yeah, I, I'd kill that. Well, it's, so, a, it's easy. Aren't you motivated now? Olympic your, I'm, I'm extremely motivated. <laughs> Actually, I, I, felt, I, I trained here this morning. I felt really. Are you going to be here tomorrow? I... You well, could, I could be here tomorrow. You come in tomorrow. Are you in shape right now? <laughs> no, no. Actually, today I'm. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 you, I'm you box in shape I, for I, what? I, I just yeah. I just came out of a hamstring injury. Today was actually the first day I've squatted heavy in. We did months. the box squats, Lou, with the green bands and three fifteen on the bar for a fast double, weighing what hundred and what the fuck do you no, weigh? I threw tens on there too, so it was about three forty five. Yeah, very fast doubles. I mean, he's, he looks great. He looks better than me. Shit. I, if I put bands on a bar, if you were in shape, I will leave money because I bring. when I did CrossFit seminars here, I don't have time. That's why Laura Phelps and her husband and A.J. Roberts do them. Mm-hmm. Well, I would bring CrossFitters. I'd put eight CrossFitters out there. They break a clean record that day. That's worth the visit to come here. Mm-hmm. They Hell also yeah. did deadlift. That day, they broke their record. Mm-hmm. Like Even if you did the bands one time and they showed you just how fucking slow you are getting underneath, if you just did one time for the awareness – you raised your awareness. Like, oh, shit, I'm so slow. Okay, so, Maybe so it'd work. What time should I come back tomorrow morning? Come here, Tom. Any, any time past 9. All right, I'll be, I'll be here after 9. The CTP will be ready with the camera. I'll put you over there. I'm going to show you how I do it. A, okay. I, a person like you, I would have two phases. You only one band, one, you know, you put a mini band, don't double it. One over the bar, one under the bar, and, you, and I'd work you up. And then if you're strong enough, see, for max effort, I'd put two strands over Okay. All right, and then you would do max effort work fun. there. So once for okay. speed, once for max effort. Right. You establish sets with the one band, max effort with the other band. Take off the freaking bands. You'll break your record immediately. This we is exactly is a what very, I should do coming off a hamstring. Injury. You, you know, I know <laughs> part, I'm, I'm people doing will. I'm doing it though. <laughs> people will criticize me and they'll argue with me and they'll tell me I'm nuts. But weightlifting is a very easy sport. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one, your ass is higher and your hands are wider. And that's primarily it. As long as you're flexible. And, um, and mobile, you could be a weightlifter. You just have to build enormous amount of lower backs. If you look at the Soviets, look look what they looked like. They had muscles. Mm-hmm. David Rager uh, I, in Strength oh, he's and such Health, a badass man. He, he said he back squatted 675 for 10 reps. You know, Victor Weighing Salt's, what? What was David? 198. Rager? Yeah. That's, or that's maybe 220 to most. That's fucking you insane. You know, a Salt's press. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Victor yeah. Salt. Do you know how much? the bottom and pressing. How much do you think he did? Oh, Jesus. Three, so, so, the audience, that's where you, you're in a bottom squat position. You're holding the bar overhead. Like, I couldn't even fucking do that and do a bar. It's really hard. He, it's, he pressed. Yeah, I don't. I, I think I can. My best size press is maybe 70 kilos. His is 363. Uh, that's, 
You can't. I can't. If I it's saw strong. that, he's, he's, he's <laughs> pressing from a front rack at the bottom of a front squat. He's in a front, in the bottom of a front squat, and mm. from there, it presses the bar of head. A strict press, press while staying three, squatted three, three, in the bottom. Three sixty-three. Yeah, wow. incredible. So, just for the yeah. for record, if you could do a standing press with that at any body do, weight, that's insane. Do you know what a a web is? A web. A web. A web. Like a spider web. Yeah. <laughs> No, you should know. You're a weightlifter, so you need to know these things. <laughs> if you're a weightlifter, for instance, a 242-pounder, and this came from the Soviet Union, I got lots of criticism. I, 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 it come out of weightlifting and fitness for life mm -hmm. by Goy Bagoya. And uh, a, a, a 242 weightlifter had to back squat at least 628, had a front squat 578, um, had to do so much tonnage in the cleans and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I put that in a magazine, and I got a kind of criticism. That's the American weightlifter's problem. They have no base like I talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, they, I won't say who, but they sent me two weightlifters here uh, with the very same system. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were supposed to be the ball green. One had a normal lower back, no upper back. The other had a big upper back and no lower back because they're not built the same. Mm -hmm. In America, you have to use a conjugate system. You can't use a generalized system. And, you know, like, for instance, if you both you guys squat 600 pounds, mm -hmm. which one of you are doing over speed, rely on speed, and which one brute strength? You can't tell. But I can tell. The one, because I use an enormous amount of bands, I put like 500, 400 pound of bands and let you max out. Whoever is strongest at the bands mm -hmm. is the strongest person because they're going to move the barbell slow. If you use a small amount of uh, band and a large amount of weight, the, the, speed, the speed strength guy would, uh, would do more that way. So that's how you can determine if two people lift the same, mm -hmm. which one is stronger and which one's faster. So if you're the faster it's one, it's like a filter I'm going, for telling what they need to work on. If you're the faster one, I'm going to make you stronger. If you're the stronger one, I'm going to make you faster. See, I'm going to reverse it. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I, I was in lots of studies. The Soviet wrestlers they they had to do one great endurance, one great strength. So the, the endurance people they put on a strength program, and the, and the, and the strong guys they put on an endurance program. Mm -hmm. They both made. Uh, it sounds a lot like what Max talked about last week, right? Where you got guys. Yeah. We have a CrossFit athlete who is. He ran a half marathon, Mike McGoldrick. Was it a half? It was a half. And he came yeah. into our gym and he loaded a 400-pound strongman stone after running a half marathon. He had this exceptional potential for this explosiveness. Under, under 200 Weighing pounds. like 190. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. 190. So he has this huge potential for explosive, but he was so explosive in CrossFit and so amped and high force that he would sort of burn himself out on these events where he had to be strong and keep grinding, for keep grinding, time, the Buffalo yeah. style. Train and teaching him to, to, to back off and to settle in and suffer a bit and be comfortable and dial back was exactly what he needed and he just fucking made the crossfit games this year well you know i talk perfectly. about football teams too when mm -hmm. if you're going to go to a d1 school we'll talk about the big food chain here mm -hmm. what do they look for they look for quickness and speed so what they trained up four years you're there quickness and speed how mm -hmm. about training what you don't have mm -hmm. because invariably a player will graduate from the school after four years here and they run slower <laughs> than they came mm -hmm. why is that mm -hmm. uh, just uh, absolute strength went down is what you're suggesting Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. You were saying you had to get out of here. What time do you have to get out of here? I don't want to hold you too long. What time is it? It's 12. Uh, yeah, I probably got I need to be going pretty good. Right. You know, can I just say I, one I thing? I just don't want yeah. to. Oh, yeah. Uh, CrossFit, uh, you know, it took me actually a while to actually fully understand CrossFit because I've always been – Try to be good at one thing. Right. And I, I finally realized, talking to Abby, Abby Grove one day, CrossFit is general fitness. The right. goal of CrossFitters is to be generally fit. Mm -hmm. But remember what I said. You have to have a plan. That's why long-term block periodization does not work mm -hmm. because you will you detrain yourself. All right? So CrossFitters need to examine themselves or their coaches and say, where does this person lack? Mm -hmm. And work on what they lack. For running events, I had the third-best Olympic triathlete girl here in America – um, I've trained two Olympic gold medal sprinters. Mm -hmm. All right. I've trained all kinds of people. I took a girl that never qualified for the nationals in six years in heptathlon and nine weeks. She qualified for the nationals. broke 10 records. Never. And by December 10th, she broke 10 records from this, from the 60 and the hurdles to the shot. She never broke a record last year. She broke two records all year. And the first one's in March and she didn't qualify. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, all right. And again, but that's from, from raising absolute strength? It's raising absolute strength. Mm -hmm. The pause to your chain. That mm -hmm. inverse curl I got is the greatest hamstring machine in the world. Reverse hypers. Uh, build everything they don't have, okay? And their endurance, their, their, everything will go up. Wise. So you're saying that for, for general fitness, for sport, no matter what, strength is the base for everything. And so raising absolute strength is the first thing you always should be focusing on. If you don't have that, then you don't have anything. Yeah, well, the Chinese say without strength, you have nothing. And mm -hmm. they're right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I believe uh, find that in a fortune cookie. <laughs> I believe <laughs> there was a um, a CrossFit event where you power clean for five reps, then you 
No, you deadlift for five, you power clean for five, and you press for five. Is that was right? Was that King Kong or something? About BT. Okay. Was the that? record was like five minutes at the time, five minutes. So I've got a guy in my gym. I said, well, let's give us a shot. Three minutes and ten seconds first time. Damn. Uh, he's a linebacker. Uh, he was cut from the Vikings because he hurt his back. He ran four, uh, four six two, thirty eight vertical. He comes here. I fix his back. He ends up deadlifts at seven hundred, mm-hmm. squatted eight hundred, raw bench four ninety. Mm-hmm. He goes to Houston in a pair of chucks. He ran four four two. And Chuck Taylor's run four four. That's two? right. One run. He wanted to run a sub uh, like a, a sub four four, but mm-hmm. he did one. They said I don't want to see no more. And a four <laughs> and a forty four vertical. Yeah. Damn. Okay. What's that That's guy weigh? Two thirty seven. Holy shit. That's My, so fast for a 237. That's right. <laughs> well, These he, guys aren't human, man. This is from, but this is some one pro camp, not here, mm-hmm. and come here, and that's what the second pro camp. Mm-hmm. And it's easy. It's very, very easy. Strength, it's absolute strength. Mercifully chase out and fix your weaknesses. Humble yourself. You know, Do the things that you're not good at and balance yourself. That, if you can, that's like 80% of the game or, or maybe mm-hmm. 90% of the game. right? If you, if you can master those things, then all the other things are just bonus, man. This fucking so, for, so for that guy, he's doing max effort once a week, and then the he, tra- he actually trained with me. Mm-hmm. He trained side by side. Everything I did, he did. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, absolutely everything. We worked out side by side. He was much stronger than the raw bench, uh-huh. but uh, we were equal in the other two lists. Okay, so he's doing a heavy day once a week and a speed day once a week. And exactly then... what we did mm-hmm. with a lot of extra sled dragging. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you watch my GPP tape, uh, it shows um, actually Laura Phelps and Phil Harrington. Mm-hmm. Uh, Laura uses uh, 330 and 140 band, and Phil uses 420. 140 for a double uh, with 40 second rest for 10 doubles. Mm -hmm. And then in 30 seconds, she pulls 275 with 220 pound of band. He pulls 325 for six doubles. That's 16 plays on the football field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Then at that point, when I had, when I would do combine here, if they were out of shape, I made a push or prowler 10 seconds all out 40 second rest. If they were weak, I made a power walk with the sled to build up the posture of your chain. Mm -hmm. And the higher you jump, the faster you run. Mm Mm-hmm. I brought Rudy. They brought Rudy Silva here, and uh, he was 292 pounds. And Johnny Parker was here to see this, and they said he ran a 5140. And they said if you can knock a tenth off, he'll make a lot of money. And Johnny said he'll play both ways. <laughs> you fucking knock the tenth off. Yeah. Do whatever you got to okay. do. Okay. They'll say knock a tenth off. I said okay. You know I'm laughing at this. He's two, <laughs> in two months, he ran 477 at the pro camp. Mm-hmm. He went from 89 to 98 in a long jump. Mm-hmm. Oh nice. wow! How shit. did I do yeah. it? Absolute strength. Large men have you can't do fifty chins. He probably can, uh, but you can out squat about two. I can't do five chins. Exactly. <laughs> Large men abs- uh, lack absolute strength, and mm-hmm. small men, um, I mean, uh, relative, rel- strength. relative strength, yeah. mm-hmm. and small men la- lack absolute. Mm-hmm. So you have to trade. See, always what you don't have, that's what you have to have. Mm-hmm. Barter. Okay. Well, since you got to take off and you just mentioned your, your GPP product, and we happen to be in your warehouse right now where you have all kinds of products. We're in the heart of the operation. Uh, can you recommend one solid product that CrossFitters probably get the most out of and then maybe let us know where they could buy all this stuff? I think mm-hmm. maybe two DVDs is basically because it's for general fitness. A GPP, which is general physical preparedness, and explosive power training tape. Mm-hmm. It shows a Greco wrestler who they sent to me um, who just won the Nationals. Mm-hmm. You know, he searches 440 off the floor. Okay. And okay, oh shit, and, yes, yeah, it's not so easy. Four forty off the floor. That's not easy floor. to do at all. All right, That's he just won the Greco Nationals, and he pushes a, a four. Let's see, he pushes um, four hundred eighty pound Warbro, I believe it is, a quarter mile nonstop, on tape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the end of that, your hands probably don't feel so good. Yeah, yeah. but like you know, we talk to talk, and we walk to walk. Literally, <laughs> with four hundred eighty pounds, so, you walk. That's to right. Walk. Where, where do I go to buy that uh, online? You can buy it online at Westside Barbell or call Westside Bar- WestsideBarbell.com. WestsideBarbell.com. Yeah, or you just call the office. You know, yeah. At, at, on the it's numbers, worth it. Numbers There's a lot of good website. resources Excellent. here. Lou, I, I think I want, I want to close with I, – I want. Can I say one thing? Oh, go, do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, my box jump record in the gym by an intern is 63 and a half inches. All right? I'm coming out with a jump book. It's ready to go right now to be, uh, you know, uh, produced. Yeah. All right? And uh, I think it's – I literally think it's the greatest jump book that uh-huh. I've ever seen this because I have world. I have jump books <laughs> that you can't buy from um, pull, the poles are very good at jumping and so was Ver Fryshansky mm-hmm. I what I did was uh, and this is what Mel Sis said no one had done I did and Mel said I have credit for this mm-hmm. if you look at the super training I'm credit for combinations method training mm-hmm. but in super tra- but you had uh, uh, Ver Fryshansky used absolute strength very heavy weights mm-hmm. and he used jumping so absolute strength explosive strength I use mechanical power I use intermediate weights. Mechanical power is developed at one-third maximum velocity. Mm -hmm. That's what speed squatting is with the bands. 
Mm -hmm. That's the key. And that's why I could take a guy and just blow him up in the jumps. Mm -hmm. The record in my gym for on your knees is uh, and jumping on your feet is 275 pounds. So you're on your knees with a bar on your back, 275, and you jump off the ground with a bar on your back. And land on your feet. Yeah. Didn't, try didn't, try yeah, it. Give it a that's shot. It sparked in my memory. Right, right. Didn't that's Phil, what you would do. You mentioned Phil Harrington. Yes. <laughs> Th didn't he go through a period where he, he blew up his raw squat by jumping that's crazy exactly amounts right. in, all, in every well, conceivable way, right? Well, you know, we wear gear because that's you – know, I didn't make the rules. I don't see a football game without uh, gear on. Yeah. And uh, so they bad-mouthed him. So Phil said, okay, I'll take off the gear, and he squatted 755 and 98 raw world what, record. And what's his body weight? Well, not, he was 198 there. The 198 a, pound guy squatting like 700, yeah. 750. 755. Right? Getting, getting deep enough to, for it to be mm -hmm. in a contest. A very fine. It's a contest. And the guy can do box jumps and right. all kinds of crazy ass jumps for days, right? So that's a, that's that's a right. good lesson. Yes. It's part of something I need to bring it back in my training. I can't well, listen, uh, Yuri Ver Vershansky mm -hmm. had almost a 12 foot standing long jump. He also has the highest vertical of all time with 50% of his body weight. Major from the ground to the bottom of his feet is 25 inches. With 50% of his body weight. So are, are jumps important to weightlifters? Obviously. So maybe if you're a weightlifter, <laughs> you probably ought to do them. You know, I, I've seen good morning machines in, in tapes I have from Poland and Russian. Mm -hmm. I have a good morning machine, but weightlifters don't. And, mm -hmm. and one thing, I don't want to criticize weightlifting. I love the sport. It's a great sport. But, you know, it seems like weightlifters train for the county fair. They don't train for the Olympics. They mm -hmm. don't have a reverse hyper. They don't have glute ham. They don't have a box belt squat. They mm -hmm. don't have a plyo bent swing. You need these things. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's, I'm going to close with this. If it's not an advantage, it's a disadvantage. Wow, man. Totally I sad. like it. And, I, I, and the other thing that Louis always said that always, like if you could put this on a slide and say just fucking do that, is train optimally. Don't, right. don't, don't burn yourself out. Don't undertrain. Find the optimal zone for you. Find these ranges that work for most people most of the time. Start there and then find data. But that, that's going to give you the bulk of your, your benefit. I have a chart over here. I have 74 people over 800. Mm -hmm. I have a 12 and a 12 of 5. Mm -hmm. 19 over 1,000. I could show you a chart on Circa Max with the weight ratio and the band tension. It only varies fucking 3. I'm sorry. It no, only, cuss, vary, cuss it only varies 3% <laughs> from an 800 squatter, the, bar, the, band, the weight percentage mm -hmm. and the band percentage. It only crosses 3%. Up to 1,200. People ask me about, well, where's your scientific evidence? Well, where's your 74 guys that squat 800? <laughs> I, they don't Take have that, any motherfucker. Science. Sounds like scientific evidence. You say, uh, that's what eat I'm shit saying. and get yeah. out of my gym. I, I, I'm, <laughs> there, I'm, there's a lab right down the, the road. That's right. That's, <laughs> that's West Side Barbell. I said, if, yeah, if you, you probably look publish at, that. If you, look at car, if you look at car technology, it comes from race cars. It doesn't come from standard automobiles on the street. Mm -hmm. Race cars is where roll cages, you know, safety devices, power steering, power brakes, Oh, mm -hmm. you know, not oh, transmit everything. And before that, it came from moonshine runs. That's exactly. Shit was very extreme. Get in this car. <laughs> cops are chasing you. Drive down a fucking mountain at 100 miles an hour and see what works and see what doesn't. If you <laughs> run up in the ditch, you got to figure out something better. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Louis, I want to ask you this. On this, has got nothing to do with training, but kind of does. I heard your parable in there. The girl was doing the machines, the, the glute ham and the hip flex and the hip flexor stretch. Look, both look torturous and fucking dangerous, and uh, I need to stretch fit and then go on it and try it. We'll, we'll make Mike do it tomorrow. But he told her, <laughs> she asked you, how much should I do? And you say, when you, you can just snatch okay, the pebble okay. from my hand, you're done. <laughs> I love that shit. What is your, you do this all the time, what, what is your, right now, your, your favorite uh, kung fu martial arts samurai parable? A quick little story to motivate the audience. And you know, you got a bunch of them, you know. Okay. I, I, like the, I always like the story of the Ronin because I'm taking on the more of the Ronin personality myself, you know, venturing off without, without a master on your own, facing the world. Well, The Shogun Assassin is my favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> Which I've seen. It's fucking great. Okay. And when the ninja come in to kill, um, you know, the Shogun's assassin, he's not there. And he killed, you know, they hurt his wife. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she comes in and she had a bad dream about this. So and she comes in and says, you know, my bad dream has come true. And she she picks up the baby and she goes, you got to take care of Dagaro. And she puts his hand and blood smears blood down his forehead and then she dies. And so, you know, the assassin says uh, he's going to get revenge on everyone. So the next next scene, you see the baby. The baby is like five months old, six months old. Yeah. He's got him there. Uh, he's in a ceremonial robe. He takes a knife and he, he takes a sword and sticks it in the ground. And he puts a pretty ball here. And he goes, Dagaro, you cannot understand my words, but you must choose. If you choose the ball you'll join your mother in death. And if you choose the sword, you'll join me in the road to vengeance. And Dagro comes over and looks at the ball, but he touched the sword. And he grabbed him up and he said, you are my son. And he went on a road of vengeance. And so in my gym, you either choose the ball or choose the sword. You choose the ball, get up. 
I have no need what for it. What better possible way could you end this show? I like it. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for coming out, Louie. Or thanks well, for having thanks us. For, thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah, thanks for, great for hosting to, us in your, your office. Great to be back. Uh, great talking to you, and we really appreciate it. I know our audience will love it. We'll come back. Yeah, we'll be back up here for the CrossFit events and interview some more. Yeah, yeah I'll, uh, I'm, I'm going to drop in tomorrow. Mike tomorrow. I'm going to drop in tomorrow. and uh, Bonus footage for this video. Probably get – yeah, it's going to – It'll be very comical for everyone at home, I'm sure, because I'll, I'll screw something up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, thanks, Lou. All right, cheers. Thanks.